Obstetric Ultrasonography, Wikipedia Article Audio Obstetric ultrasonography is the use of medical ultrasonography in pregnancy, in which sound waves are used to create real-time visual images of the developing embryo or fetus in its mother's uterus. The procedure is a standard part of prenatal care in many countries, as it can provide a variety of information about the health of the mother, the timing and progress of the pregnancy, and the health and development of the embryo or fetus. Terminology Types 3D Ultrasound Medical Uses Early Pregnancy First Trimester Second and Third Trimester Dating and Growth Monitoring Fetal Sex Discernment Influencing Factors Ultrasonography of the Cervix Abnormality Screening Safety Issues History Social and Culture The International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends that pregnant women have routine obstetric ultrasounds between 18 weeks and 22 weeks gestational age in order to confirm pregnancy timing to measure the fetus so that growth abnormalities can be recognized quickly later in pregnancy, and to assess for congenital malformations and multiple pregnancies. Additionally, the IJUAG recommends that pregnant women have obstetric ultrasounds between 11 weeks and 13 weeks 6 days gestational age in countries with resources to perform them. Performing an ultrasound at this early stage of pregnancy can more accurately confirm the timing of the pregnancy and can also assess for multiple fetuses and major congenital abnormalities at an earlier stage. Research shows that routine obstetric ultrasound before 24 weeks gestational age can significantly reduce the risk of failing to recognize multiple gestations and can improve pregnancy dating to reduce the risk of labor induction for post-dates pregnancy. There is no difference, however, in perinatal death or poor outcomes for babies. Below are useful terms on ultrasound. In normal state, each body tissue type, such as liver, spleen, or kidney, has a unique echogenicity. Fortunately, gestational sac, yolk sac and embryo are surrounded by hyperechoic body tissues. Traditional obstetric sonograms are done by placing a transducer on the abdomen of the pregnant woman. One variant a transvaginal sonography, is done with a probe placed in the woman's vagina. Transvaginal scans usually provide clearer pictures during early pregnancy and in obese women. Also used is Doppler sonography which detects the heartbeat of the fetus. Doppler sonography can be used to evaluate the pulsations in the fetal heart and blood's vessels for signs of abnormalities. Modern 3D ultrasound images provide greater detail for prenatal diagnosis than the older 2D ultrasound technology. While 3D is popular with parents desiring a prenatal photograph as a keepsake, both 2D and 3D are discouraged by the FDA for non-medical use, but there are no definitive studies linking ultrasound to any adverse medical effects. The following 3D ultrasound images were taken at different stages of pregnancy. 3D ultrasound of fetal movements at 12 weeks. 75 mm fetus. Fetus at 17 weeks. Fetus at 20 weeks. A gestational sac can be reliably seen on transvaginal ultrasound by 5 weeks gestational age. The embryo should be seen by the time the gestational sac measures 20 mm, about 5 and a half weeks. The heartbeat is usually seen on transvaginal ultrasound by the time the embryo measures 5 mm, but may not be visible until the embryo reaches 7 mm 
around seven weeks gestational age. Coincidentally, most miscarriages also happen by seven weeks gestation. The rate of miscarriage, especially threatened miscarriage, drops significantly if normal heartbeat is detected. Contents in the cavity of the uterus seen at approximately five weeks of gestational age. Artificially colored, showing gestational sac, yolk sac, and embryo. Embryo at five weeks and one day of gestational age with discernible heartbeat. Embryo at five weeks and five days of gestational age with discernible heartbeat. In the first trimester, a standard ultrasound examination typically includes. In the second trimester, a standard ultrasound exam typically includes. Gestational age is usually determined by the date of the woman's last menstrual period, and assuming ovulation occurred on day 14 of the menstrual cycle. Sometimes a woman may be uncertain of the date of her last menstrual period, or there may be reason to suspect ovulation occurred significantly earlier or later than the 14th day of her cycle. Ultrasound scans offer an alternative method of estimating gestational age. The most accurate measurement for dating is the crown rump length of the fetus, which can be done between 7 and 13 weeks of gestation. After 13 weeks of gestation, the fetal age may be estimated using the biparietal diameter, the head circumference, the length of the femur, the crown heel length, and other fetal parameters. Dating is more accurate when done earlier in the pregnancy, if a later skin gives a different estimate of gestational age, the estimated age is not normally changed but rather it is assumed the fetus is not growing at the expected rate. Not useful for dating, the abdominal circumference of the fetus may also be measured. This gives an estimate of the weight and size of the fetus and is important when doing serial ultrasounds to monitor fetal growth. The sex of the fetus may be discerned by ultrasound as early as 11 weeks gestation. The accuracy is relatively imprecise when attempted early. After 13 weeks gestation, a high accuracy of between 99% to 100% is possible if the fetus does not display intersex external characteristics. The following is accuracy data from two hospitals. The accuracy of fetal sex discernment depends on. Obstetric sonography has become useful in the assessment of the cervix in women at risk for premature birth. A short cervix preterm is undesirable, at 24 weeks gestation a cervix length of less than 25 mm defines a risk group for preterm birth, further, the shorter the cervix the greater the risk. It also has been helpful to use ultrasonography in women with preterm contractions, as those whose cervix length exceed 30 mm are unlikely to deliver within the next week. In most countries, routine pregnancy sonographic scans are performed to detect developmental defects before birth. This includes checking the status of the limbs and vital organs, as well as specific tests for abnormalities. Some abnormalities detected by ultrasound can be addressed by medical treatment in utero or by perinatal care though indications of other abnormalities can lead to a decision regarding abortion. Perhaps the most common such test uses a measurement of the nuchal translucency thickness. Although 91% of fetuses affected by Down syndrome exhibit this defect, 5% of fetuses flagged by the test do not have Down syndrome. Ultrasound may also detect fetal organ anomaly. Usually scans for this type of detection are done around 18 to 23 weeks of gestational age. 
Some resources indicate that there are clear reasons for this and that such scans are also clearly beneficial because ultrasound enables clear clinical advantages for assessing the developing fetus in terms of morphology, bone shape, skeletal features, fetal heart function, volume evaluation, fetal lung maturity, and general fetus well-being. Second trimester ultrasound screening for aneuploid eyes is based on looking for soft markers and some predefined structural abnormalities. Soft markers are variations from normal anatomy, which are more common in aneuploid fetuses compared to euploid ones. These markers are often not clinically significant and do not cause adverse pregnancy outcomes. Current evidence indicates that diagnostic ultrasound is safe for the unborn child, unlike radiographs, which employ ionizing radiation. Randomized controlled trials have followed children up to ages 8-9, with no significant differences in vision, hearing, school performance, dyslexia, or speech and neurologic development by exposure to ultrasound. In one randomized trial, the children with greater exposure to ultrasound had a reduction in perinatal mortality, and was attributed to the increased detection of anomalies in the ultrasound group. The 1985 maximum power allowed by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration of 180 mW per square cm is well under the levels used in therapeutic ultrasound but still higher than the 30 to 80 mW per square cm range of the Stat Eisen V veterinary lipos device. Doppler ultrasonography examinations has a thermal index of about five times that of regular ultrasound examinations. Several randomized controlled trials have reported no association between Doppler exposure and birth weight, APGAR scores, and perinatal mortality. One randomized controlled trial, however, came to the result of a higher perinatal death rate of normally formed infants born after 24 weeks exposed to Doppler ultrasonography, but this was not a primary outcome of the study, and has been speculated to be due to chance rather than a harmful effect of Doppler itself. Echogenic giving rise to reflections of ultrasound waves hyperechoic more echogenic than normal, hypoechoic less echogenic than normal, isoechoic the same echogenicity as another tissue, transvaginal ultrasonography, ultrasound is performed through the vagina, transabdominal ultrasonography, ultrasound is performed across the abdominal wall or through the abdominal cavity. Gestational sac size, location, and number identification of the embryo and slash or yolk sac, measurement of fetal length, fetal number, including number of amnionic sacs and chorionic sacs for multiple gestations, embryonic slash fetal cardiac activity, assessment of embryonic slash fetal anatomy appropriate for the first trimester, evaluation of the maternal uterus, tubes, ovaries, and surrounding structures, Evaluation of the fetal nuchal fold, with consideration of fetal nuchal translucency assessment. Fetal number, including number of amnionic sacs and chorionic sacs for multiple gestations, fetal cardiac activity, fetal position relative to the uterus and cervix, location and appearance of the placenta, including site of umbilical cord insertion when possible amnionic fluid volume, gestational age assessment, fetal weight estimation, fetal anatomical survey, evaluation of the maternal uterus, tubes, ovaries, and surrounding structures when appropriate. Gestational age, precision of sonographic machine, expertise of the operator, fetal posture. The FDA discourages its use for non-medical purposes such as fetal keepsake videos and photos, even though it is the same technology used in hospitals.
The American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine recommends spectral Doppler only if M-mode sonography is unsuccessful, and even then only briefly, due to the acoustic intensity delivered to the fetus. Scottish physician Ian Donald was one of the pioneers of medical use of ultrasound. His article Investigation of Abdominal Masses by Pulsed Ultrasound was published in The Lancet in 1958. Donald was Regius Professor of Midwifery at the University of Glasgow. In 1962, after about two years of work, Joseph Holmes, William Wright, and Ralph Meyer Dirk developed the first compound contact B mode scanner. Their work had been supported by U.S. Public Health Services and the University of Colorado. Wright and Meyer Dirk left the university to form Physical Ionic Engineering Incorporated, which launched the first commercial handheld articulated arm compound contact B mode scanner in 1963. This was the start of the most popular design in the history of ultrasound scanners. Obstetric ultrasound has played a significant role in the development of diagnostic ultrasound technology in general. Much of the technological advances in diagnostic ultrasound technology are due to the drive to create better obstetric ultrasound equipment. Acusin Corporation's pioneering work on the development of coherent image formation helped shape the development of diagnostic ultrasound equipment as a whole. In March and April 2015, a post by a pregnant woman named Jen Martin and her husband to YouTube, which had been viewed at least 2 million times and had many likes, showed the 14-week-old fetus clapping repeatedly to the song, sung by the parents, If You're Happy and You Know It. It was later revealed that the video while not a fake had been somewhat edited to show more fetal claps than likely occurred. It is not unprecedented for fetuses of that age to make momentary movements that could be repeated once or twice beyond the initial movement, according to experts, but to repeat such a movement more than that especially purposefully would not likely be feasible at that point. The increasingly widespread use of ultrasound technology in monitoring pregnancy has had a great impact on the way in which women and societies at large conceptualize and experience pregnancy and childbirth. The pervasive spread of obstetric ultrasound technology around the world and the conflation of its use with creating a safe pregnancy as well as the ability to see and determine features like the sex of the fetus affect the way in which pregnancy is experienced and conceptualized. This technocratic takeover of pregnancy is not limited to Western or developed nations but also affects conceptualizations and experiences in developing nations and is an example of the increasing medicalization of pregnancy, a phenomenon that has social as well as technological ramifications. Ethnographic research concerned with the use of ultrasound technology in monitoring pregnancy can show us how it has changed the embodied experience of expecting mothers around the globe.